because he has been good. How many know that your God is a good God? How many know that God is a good God? We are blessed. Like my husband was saying, um, he's a, he gets excited. And um, I'm excited. See, when you, you understand you have a voice, and you know that God has given you a voice, then you wait patiently for that voice to come into fulfillment. And so it's not the act of being on television. It's the act of taking the voice out of this building. And when you look at it that way, then you don't look at it, uh, oh, yeah, well, you know, it's TV. No, no, no. It's the fact that the worship is going to be out of this house. The word is going to be out of this house. The prophetic words is going to be out of the house. Because one of the things that my husband did, because, you know, he loves his kids. He's like, you know, I have a band. And I'm looking at him. I'm like, oh, Lord. He goes, and I have some prophetic dancers. I mean, that's the first thing. He looked at the stage and he told the lady, I'm like, let her talk. I mean, you, you're not even here yet. And you're telling them you have a band and you have some dancers. And she's like, you know what? We've never done that. That sounds like a good idea. So you have to understand that it's not about us. It's about us. Yeah. And when you look at it that way, then you're going to understand that God is, has just been preparing an army. There are people that are going to be blessed with this prophetic songs, with the prophetic dancers, and going to say, where is that church? And everything that God has been saying, then one way or the other, God will make sure that it comes to pass. So if the, the Kissimmee radio didn't want to have us, then God said, you know what? I'm going to expose you in a bigot atmosphere. And now no one is going to be able, not, not only is the word is going to come out, now the songs are going to come out. Now the dancers are going to come out. God has given us, he's given us double for our trouble. Isn't God good? Yeah. I like it when God does it big. Because God is a big God. I'll come with you today with this word that God has been teaching the church. Isaiah 44, 3 and 4. I want you to go with me. Because uh, God has been speaking to this church about this. Times of refreshing. Have you heard of that? Times of rest. Times of refreshing. Um, we've been prophesied those that went yesterday. I thank you for supporting our ministry, being with us, um, you know, taking your time out of your Saturday to be with us. And, and, and I thank you for that. And those that were there and those that travel with us to different events and activities have heard how God has been speaking to us about times of refreshing. I want to clear up exactly what God means because sometimes God gives words and we don't understand at the same time what he's talking about. So I want to clear up what he means. And, and with that, then let's start with this first. Um, you're going to excuse me today. Maybe I won't, you know, be too loud. I'm trying not to because my voice, I preached yesterday, uh, my heart out. And so I lost a little bit of my voice. But Isaiah 44, 3 and 4, we're going to go into definitions and we're going to go some of the stuff so you can understand exactly what God is saying for the next six months of the church. Amen? It says, for I will pour water upon him who is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit, say with me, my spirit, upon your offspring. So offspring, then you have to give birth. Say Amen. And my blessing upon your descendants, and they shall spring up. Say with me, spring up. spring up. Among the grass like willows or poplars by the water courses. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord, that you are inside of us, around us. You are just making a way for us. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that gives us what we need when we need it, Lord. You know our hearts. You know what we need today. If we're tired, I ask you for strength. I ask you to invigorate our life. I ask you for new strength, new energy, Lord, new wisdom. 
I ask you, Lord, that you give us what we need at this moment. Let your Holy Spirit dwell in us and, and heal us, Lord, and lift us up and, and give us exactly what we need for this work week coming up. I praise you, Lord, for what you've done, but I praise you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. When we speak about times of refreshing, you have to understand that a time is a separated season. It's a separated minute by hour. When we speak about time, you have to look at your watch. You have to look at the hours. You have to say, well, I give you 10 minutes. Then it's a separated time that God has established. Um, churches lives in seasons, and, and we live in times that God has declared over our life. That's why uh, it, there's a time for everything in our life. There's a time to cry, but there's a time to be joyous. And that's why you have to understand that uh, we have to understand and discern the times that you're living in. That's why when we declared maybe a month and a half ago that we are living the aftermath that Pastor Heidi spoke about because we had a breakthrough. See how God has been lining the church. If you understand what we prophetically sing up here, what we prophetically declare, then you understand where the church is going. That's why I don't understand people that say, I don't know where they're going. Well, you're obviously you're not listening because God God is always speaking and everything goes into accordance of what he said. So there was a breakthrough maybe in the month of June and then we spoke about an aftermath and then Pastor Jose spoke about also having the rubble but having growth and then God spoke about the times of refreshing because you have to understand that for growth there has to be a breakthrough. So if the church has received a breakthrough, it's because the head has received a breakthrough. And if the head has received a breakthrough, then you have to accept the breakthrough that has started on the head. Can we say amen? That's why if you're still struggling with things and you're still not aligned with what God is saying, you better get on your mark this morning because the train has taken off. When I say that is because God has spoken that the uh, people here is going to be the leadership to something bigger. So the leadership, and God spoke about this this last Sunday, has to be aligned and in accord with the vision that God has deposited in this church. So the leadership first has to have the breakthrough and then understand that there's going to be growth. Amen. So when we speak about growth, then we have to speak about times of refreshing. And the times of refreshing is very important because you think of refreshing maybe is a time to be laid back. And even though it's a time of rest, it's not a time to be laid back. You can rest doing something, but be rested in the Lord. Doesn't mean you're going to sit your behind down and do absolutely nothing. It doesn't mean that you're not going to work for the kingdom. It doesn't mean that you're just going to not come to church. It's the times of refreshing. Let's just go out and do whatever. No, no, no. God has given a times of refreshing because it's bringing new energy. This is a definition. And new strength in a pleasant and often unexpected way. Like a refreshing breeze on a hot day. So maybe you're still going to go through some stuff because life is about issues. And you're going to go through some messes, but doesn't mean that you cannot be refreshed in the midst of the messes. Because even though a God is saying is refreshing, what it means is that he's bringing new energy, new passion, new motivation. He's going to give you a new strength. I don't know if you understand that after a battle, we lose strength. We lose the passion. We lose the motivation. We lose the dedication because the battle wears you out. The battle is there and you're trying to struggle. So there's an internal struggle inside of you that is manifested on the outside so you begin to lose the strength that you acquired 
along the way. So times of refreshing is a season. God spoke about six months. Uh, I would understand if you and me in this six months would be appreciated with the time. See, it's not every day that God gives a church a season of refreshing. Some churches don't ever get that. Some people never get that. But aren't you glad that God said, you guys been through a rough battle. You guys been through cave. You guys been through depression. You guys been through stuff. And now I give you six months not to sit back and forget what I've said, but to sit back and you rest on the Lord and you activate yourself with what God has said. So the definition is bringing new energy. Say it with me, new energy. See, new strength in a pleasant and then unexpected way. See, you're expecting God to come this way and God comes another way. I, I would have never seen this coming. What he just spoke about. Yeah, we knew it was going to happen. But isn't it joyous when God just surprises you? See, he is not only surprising us, he's surprising the church. He's surprising you. He's saying, you better get it together. Because I'm trying to do something with generation of faith. I'm trying to show a voice and, and a voice has an influence. And when you have influence, you can change things. And God needs us to change people into kingdom culture. And God wants to use you. Isn't that powerful? So he says, I need you to prepare these six months to refresh yourself. To renew yourself, to receive new passion, to receive new strength. Because what's going to happen next year is that you're going to need that new passion, the new strength, so you can be able to work this thing out. Amen? So refreshing is very important. That's why he says, I will pour water upon him who is thirsty. See, you have to understand that the refreshing has everything to do with God himself. You have to go to him to receive a refreshing season. You have to go to the Father. See, it's not time to sit back and forget about God. It's if you want a refreshing season to begin in your life and to be activated through the word that God has already deposited in the church, then you have to go to him. Because he is the only one that can bring you new energy, new strength. Having that alone time with God. Can you say amen? Because sometimes we think it's just going to magically come from heaven. No, no, no. The times of refreshing is connected directly to God himself. Amen? So when we speak about refresh and we go into other definitions, I want you to understand what, what this says. It says to revive with as if with rest, food, or drink. You give new vigor or spirit. Some of, some of us need new spirit, new vigor, new energy. It says to give new freshness or brightness. It means to restore. Six months to restore you. I repeat, I need the piano going. To restore you. Do you understand? So that means there's things in our life that has knocked us down. There's things in our life that has made us uh, not want to do things like we wanted to before. Not come to church, not get involved. Uh, I don't want, I want to do my thing. God is saying, I'm giving you six months to get yourself together. You know that he gave Elijah in the cave. I spoke about this six weeks. He's giving us six months. <laughs> six weeks but he's given us six months it means to restore he said there's things in your life that have been broken down with the battle there's things in the life that has been torn down in your life there's things in life that has betrayed you it has made you as sick to your stomach but i give you this time if you come to me remember refreshing is connected with god you have to go to god to receive the refreshing if you still haven't felt refreshed it's because you haven't gone to the father because the bible says if you want to get to the Father, go through Jesus Christ and everything shall be given to you. So you have to surrender 
Times of refreshing means to restore, but for that it means total surrendering. Say with me, total surrendering. Look at this. To make cool, clean, freshen up. Some of us need some freshen up. You need some spiritual deodorant. Uh huh. You know, because you're so sick of life. You're so sick of it. You're so sick of everything that's happening. I'm sick of it. I go to church and I'm still sick. God is saying, I want to refresh you. It's to clean you up. It's to freshen you up. It's to put you, you know, a, a nice cologne, a nice perfume. It's me yucky for guys. <laughs> 